A lot has changed here on the Jersey Shore since Sandy. When I found out we were coming to do a striper episode, to say the least, I could not wait to get here. Fishermen come from all over the world, and it's a main source of economics for my fellow captain, like Irwin and his son Irwin Jr. from Scales and Tails Charters. Unfortunately, in late October 2012, Hurricane Sandy zeroed in directly where I grew up on the Jersey Shore. I could not fight back the tears watching this disaster on news. With my father, friends, and family just miles away, all I could do was sit here and expect the worst. Fortunately, I heard from my father the next day and was assured that my family was safe. Although he did let me know that the area was totally devastated beyond all belief. The Jersey Shore as I remembered it from my childhood would never be the same. Our marinas were gone, the landscape was destroyed, from Atlantic City all the way up to the highlands, the boardwalks were gone, not to mention seeing the roller coaster sitting in the Atlantic Ocean on the news channel. It's a year later, and the film crew and I have arrived back at the Jersey Shore. Hey, we're going over to Seaside Bridge, world famous. Captain Irwin from Scales and Tails has asked us to return. Just to let the people know this area is rebuilding and fishing is still outstanding. Walking the seaside boardwalk today has really given me mixed emotions. Um, first, it was grief and sadness looking at the devastation. Um, and then as I started walking down further, it was really a sense of pride of being from New Jersey. Um, you can see everybody's here rebuilding and you really can't ask for more after getting hit by the devastation that they did. feeling to see the boardwalk rebuilt. Little by little the stores are getting rebuilt. We're still trying to rebuild here but I think uh, there's a lot of people coming and it looks good for the summer so far. I see lots of people coming here working here every day and uh, trying to get everything built back up and uh, it's definitely been a lot of people here on the beach and uh, people buying shirts and, and having fun like they would every summer. Well, as long as we get good weather, it's gradually getting better. People are starting to know that places are open, there's things to do down here, and uh, we're coming back little by little. Thank you very much. We, uh, we do our best. We do our best. Feeling great about the recovery that I'm seeing down here in Seaside. I cannot wait to head up the Garden State Parkway north today to the Highlands to meet with Captain Irwin and see how these stripers are faring out there too. Good deal, brother. Can't wait to see you, man. You got it. We'll see you soon. That was old Captain Irwin. They killed him last night. So the Jersey Shore is recovering and it's looking good. The fishing is phenomenal. Let's hope it stays that way. We don't get no crazy winds or nothing, but we're gonna get a fish all on the pin today, baby. Come on. Let's get out of here. Good to see you again, sir. Same year. I can't believe it's a year, man. I know, a lot, lot looks like a lot has changed uh, oh. with the storm. Sandy, I want you to tell me about a little of this here. This is the aftermath. After the water receded, that's what's left. Hasn't been touched. Wow. That was nothing. Tuesday after the storm. Look at it. Looks just like nobody did nothing over there. Nope. So, and then they your seawall here at, at low tide, I know the storm came in at high tide, right? Yeah, right? high tide, yeah. So, that's your high tide, that water line there. So, how high was it in five retrospect? Feet, five feet up this building, water came in. Wow. Water came in 14 feet above our high tide line down here. In the wow. Region. Have you ever 14. seen anything like that before? Never. Never. We're, have, we're recovering, right? The guys are working hard. Everyone's pulled together and really working hard to get it to go. Hey, with that said, let's go get us some damn fish, right, brother. All right, let's go. Try it again.
Today we are in pursuit to catch a world record striped bass, which is currently 81.14 pounds. We will do a record regardless, because today we're going to be catching them on a Sheffield center pin. The 81.14 ounce record was established August 4th, 2011, not far from these very same waters we're fishing today. As soon as we broke out of the river basin into the Atlantic Ocean, I could not believe what I saw. All we saw was thousands of 35 pound stripers busting the surface chasing the bunker. We knew it was gonna be a good day. We are using a DR2 Okuma Sheffield, which was given to us by Dave Sheffield, uh, owner of Triple S Sporting Goods out of Rochester, who is now sponsoring us. W once again, this is gonna be the first striper ever taken on a pin. Um, and that's our goal, baby. We had the big old float floating around out there. We're just waiting for him to pop it. Man, we got stripers banging all over the place. Captain put us right on them right away. Fish are all busting the top. You think you're hearing waves. You're not hearing waves, you're hearing fish. Busting bunker. With a few tweaks to our system, we had the center pin at the ready, pulled up on these fish, dropped the bait in the water, and wham! Within 30 seconds, a big old striped bass. Here he is, locked up. I got him. We're locked, baby. We're locked, baby, yeah! Oh, we got 20 pound main line. The rod's only for eight pound. Oh, and he's still going. We are trying to stop a big old striper. What's different about it from the other center pins is it actually has a drag. So those of you guys that are, you know, intimidated, not the word scared, but intimidated without the drag, uh, no more reason to be intimidated. Get your butt a pin too. Uh, it's a fantastic way to challenge yourself, um, not only with the fish up in the Salmon River and uh, surrounding tributaries, but of course, I mean, we're, we're catching stripers on them. You already know what we've done on them in Florida, Alaska, uh, up near home state. So, well, I can't even stop talking. I'm so excited. I just want to get this fish in my hands so fast. We're actually gaining ground right now. We're gaining ground, boys. We got them to the boat. Little Irwin's getting ready to gaff him. I can't see nothing. And I feel the relief on the rod. We got him, baby. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to leave the lips dirty. That is the first one on a pin ever. And that's got to be 30 plus, right? Oh, yeah. 30 plus. 39 pounds, 10 ounces. Oh my yeah! 39.10 pounds on the center pin. After killing ourselves for nine hours on the boat last year and getting blown off by the wind, I was cool. We got our fish. We're ready to go. Captain Irwin said, oh no, we're going to get some more. Just as we landed the 39.10, Cap went ahead and, oh, the drag working good. Cap went ahead and dropped one off the back of the boat. And just like that, we're on another one. Get a lot of questions about the rod. As you can see, it's doing its job. There's a reason that it's so long. Without a drag on the normal system, uh, you know, any, everything helps. You get a lot of backbone in the rod. Uh, but now, Mr. Sheffield went ahead along with Okuma and took the intimidation factor out of it for you, and now we have a drag. So I can let that go. The fishing was so good, it was almost like fishing in a stock trout pond that never seen bait before. If there's any question that this fishery has declined at all, no way. This is phenomenal striper fishing. Yeah! That's two, my man. That's two. I did get an education about these fish that I did not know before. The lateral lines on the stripers from the Hudson are broken, which means that that's where they're from and born. The ones that lateral lines are straight, 90% of the time are from the Chesapeake Bay. These scales and tails, boys, you can't find nothing better. I mean, it's a family-run business. I'm a family-oriented guy, and uh, this is what we came to do. Fish on, baby. The fish were everywhere. They were coming out of the Hudson from spawning, and they were coming up the Atlantic seaboard from Chesapeake Bay from spawning, following the bait and the water temperatures. We just happened to have both. Well, the way the weather pattern's been this year, the storms are starting to roll in. We can see lightning coming in upon us. I was ready to call it up, but we had one more in us. Check it out. Uh, just a quick shout out to my uh, 
Who business partner and uh, sponsor Dave Sheffield, owner of Triple S. Dave, thanks, brother. I told you we could do it. Just to bring more excitement to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go any further, fish on, baby. Woo! Another fatty. As you can see, these fish here too, they're all about the power. Big fat square tail, chasing those live bunker. That's a 30 pound fish. Yes, sir. I'm in. These fish here. Me? Got the big old mouth oh, swallowing that bunker hole. They have teeth just like largemouth bass, sandpaper. They got to eat that bunker hole in one shot. So they got that big old mouth there. Nice solid fish. Before we go, can I get a fish on, man? Fish, fish on! on! Till next time, we'll see you. Folks, please don't be afraid to come down here. Everywhere I've been from the seaside, Atlantic City, all the way up here to the Highlands, looks great. 50 to 90% of everything is open, depending on where you go. The restaurant's there, the people are there with smiles, their jersey strong, and they wanna see you. Come down to the beaches, come down and go do some fishing. Come down and just hang out with the family, but the Jersey Shore is back. Ah, you see you come down to Irwin, Scales and Tails. What's cool, but also cool about coming to see him, took us to this nice restaurant called Off the Hook, and they'll even cook your catch for you. So, I mean, come on, can't beat it. Fish on. There you go, that's the finished product. Black and Striper at Off the Hook, down here at the Highlands. Scales and tails. Fish, eat the fish, and have a Pepsi. Can't beat it. SMTFishing.com. <laughs> Come on.